What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Be Green. I'm your host, Greg Goldner, and you know Be Green, it's the show that makes being green, well, just a little bit easier. We have got an epic show lined up for you today. We're gonna hit the world famous Santa Monica Pier, and then Natalie's gonna hang out with a world famous chef, and then I'm gonna take you to a restaurant that's changing the way, well, the world looks at seafood. You ready? Let's do it. Guys, we are here on the world famous Santa Monica Pier alongside the world famous Jim Harris, Deputy Director of the Santa Monica Pier. Jim, thanks for the time. I appreciate oh, you my pleasure. having us up here to this amazing access overlooking the Ferris wheel. I mean, come on. I'm getting better than this. This is a special place for you, isn't it? It is. It's a very special place for me. It's, uh, it's basically been my home for 24 years now. You're living on the pier? Uh, I not, think you can not, live, you can't sleep on the pier. Not literally, but I spend so much time here and I enjoy all the time that I spend here. I do consider it a home. Some of the things you're working on, and one of the biggest things you've been working on lately was is the brand new pier shop. Tell me a little bit about the pier shop. Well, the pier shop is, uh, it's actually part of our company's new new rebranding of the pier. Uh, we brought in Jay Ferran from Tom's Shoes. He's our new executive director. And, uh, and he's rebranded the pier, he's created the whole Sun Deck Waves new, uh, new logo. Oh, I see, a, yeah, fancy. Exactly. What so did, we're tell me about the logo. Yeah. We're celebrating 100 years of Sun, Deck, and Waves, all right? <laughs> all so right. it's basically what the pier is, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so we've opened up this new shop to help with that, that rebranding and help get the, the, the spirit going. The shop celebrates the history of the pier and, and brings it to a contemporary lifestyle. You can find nice, uh, nice t-shirts, nice tank tops, uh, uh, postcards, you name it. We've got, we've got some really cool stuff and it all celebrates 100 years of uh, sun, deck, and waves. So you literally have it all and guys, it wouldn't be Santa Monica if it didn't have an eco aspect to it. That's so if you don't mind, can we head down there, check it out, and maybe you can show me how you guys made it a little eco. Absolutely. Cool, let's do it. Okay. Good. Jim, I gotta be honest with you, I'm really excited to check out the new pier shop. Yeah, well, uh, me too. But before we go in, let's check out this water fountain. Okay, real cool. Quick, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's the first refillable water bottle station that we've had on the pier, and we hope to add a couple of more. But, um, but what it does is, is it helps to eliminate the, the need for single-use bottles. What right. you can do is come here, refill the bot water bottle that you brought, and move on. It's free, it's economically friendly, and it's just a really great addition that we've so got here. So single-use. Single-use like, bottle. Just like that one, Like yeah. you got here. Yeah. All right, so it's easy enough, you just put it in here. And then you press the button and it's filling. There you go. And so then that totally eliminates having to throw it away, buy a new one, right? Exactly. I like it. All right, well, what if I wanted to get something different? You got something else I can fill up here? Sure, we have a great water bottle for sale inside the store. Let's All right, go let's check in. it out. This pier shop is awesome. Not only hey, do I love the way it's decorated because I'm I'm into the whole nautical thing, and we are on the pier. Sure. But you've got so many cool clothes here. And we do, we do, and it's all locally made. All the so clothes part, are. All all the clothes are locally made in the LA area. Uh, all, from the t-shirts to the board shorts. The board shorts actually are uh, are from the original designer of board shorts, Caton. You know what? You've got so many cool things that are ecologically friendly here, but you've we also have. got some really cool history here. And we one have. of the things that we talked about earlier is right behind you is Pete yeah. Peterson. Pete Peterson was a, a lifeguard. He's considered by many to be uh, the greatest waterman of, of all time. He was one of the original Santa Monica lifeguards. And he uh, was not only good at saving lives and in water sports, but uh, he, had a, he had a knack for inventing things and uh, was an excellent carpenter too. He created the, uh, the Peterson paddleboard, which uh, there's one hanging up in our shop. Also, he was the creator of the Peterson tube. Now, this is the lifeguard tube that you see all over the world. And now, some of the furniture in here is also green and environmentally friendly, isn't it? It is. Actually, this, this cabinet right here is actually a, a box that we collected from a marine salvage yard. So you're all about reusing, recycling, recycling. just whenever you can. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. So Jim, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us. The history, mm -hmm. the pier shop, it's just awesome. Guys, if you want to find out more, www.santamonicapier.org. I'm going to buy this water bottle. Natalie, I'm putting it on your tab. Sorry. Guys, the number is 17 million. What that is is 17 million barrels of oil. That's what it takes to produce the number of single-use plastic water bottles consumed in the United States every year. That number is freaky. That's scary is what that is. All right, I'm gonna get a little lighthearted now. Natalie, I know you're a foodie. You're with some chef. I'm kind of jealous. What are you guys doing out there, huh? Make me jealous. I am here with 
with Chef Ray Garcia of Fig Restaurant. How you doing? Good, Natalie. How are you? Wonderful. I have to say I'm a huge fan, not to be a stalker, but um, <laughs> you're really well known in this area and we're so happy to be talking to you today. So. Well, thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you guys actually have a, a little stand um, at the farmer's market here on Wednesdays, right? Yep. Once a month we come out here to the Santa Monica market and we uh, bring you know, some of our, uh, our favorites from the restaurant and then a few items that we bring just for the market. That is so nice. Now, okay, you guys are all about sustainability at Fig and why, why is that so important to you? Well, it's a huge part of, of what we do because we really take our responsibility serious outside of the kitchen. You know, we have a lot of great chefs who are working with us and for us in the next generation. You know, we want to make sure that we preserve, you know, preserve the land, preserve our oceans, and, and, and we do that by just a lot of sustainable practices. You know, where we source, what we put on the menu, how we prepare it, and what we do with some of the byproduct and the waste. So what would you say to other restaurants or other chefs that they want to implement sustainable practices, but they think it's too expensive or it's too much of a hassle? What would you say to them? Yeah, it's definitely worth it, okay. is, is what I would say. You know, from a chef standpoint, even from a business standpoint, it's not as expensive as people make it you know, out to be, uh, and your, your guests will, will appreciate it. People understand nowadays you know, the difference between you know, great local in-season produce and, and stuff that's coming from a, a freezer or that's traveled you know, 5,000 miles. Miles right. to, to come to your plate. So, what other uh, sustainable things do you guys do at Fig? I know there's a few others, right? We, we we do. I mean, the sustainability side goes beyond just how we source, but it's you know, what we do with with our waste. We have our fry oil that's turned into uh, hand soap for the for the restrooms. Okay. We filter our, our own water, so we have you know, filtered uh, filtered water in yeah. uh, glass bottles. Um, you know, we have a bicycle valet to really kind of get some of those, encourage the locals to, to uh, you know, if they're not going to walk, then to bike to the restaurant rather than drive. That's great. And you guys, actually, when you go to the farmer's market, you walk your your produce back to the yeah, hotel? Yeah, we, we walk the produce back to the hotel. So we have some carts that, that come down and then we just, you know, wheel it all, That's wheel it all back. Reducing the carbon footprint <laughs> in more ways than one at Fig. That's so wonderful. Now I, I'm seeing some little skillets and little burners back there and you guys are making a bunch of stuff, right? We have a bunch of items on the menu. I'm gonna show you how to make one of them. It's one of our signature dishes. It's been on the menu since day one. Oh, I can't uh, it's wait. a vegetarian item um, and it, it's something that rotates seasonally. So oh, we get a chance to, uh, to make it together. Good, thanks. I'm gonna help you out. Thanks, Sounds Chef. Good. Let's do it. Okay, Chef Ray, what are we about to make? So we're gonna make our warm scarlet quinoa. It is kind of in between a salad and a, and a hot dish. You know, right. it's, it's called the warm quinoa salad. Um, the first thing is we have some uh, Swiss chard. And uh, you, you cook what's in season, right? We're cooking, what, we're cooking what's in season. So we have just a little bit of Swiss chard. Again, this has just been wilted down. Fancy, I love that sound. Fancy, I, fancy grill here. No, this is great that you can do this. Yeah, so you can do you can do this in the market. You do it on a camping trip. You can yeah. do it in your backyard, wherever. Um, so we have some carrots. Uh, during the fall, we usually will switch into more of a butternut squash or a hard squash. Um, you know, again, they're they're in season and it makes a little bit more sense at the time. Here, edamame, okay. great source of, of protein. This is a vegetarian dish, uh, oh, and it's you know, it, but it is very filling. Yeah, it's one of those few dishes I say I wouldn't have bacon to. Oh, that, that's rare for that's not rare many, for a right? chef. There's not many. If you can just throw in maybe half of that quinoa, sure. So this is already cooked. We've okay. taken it and just cooked it in uh, some water wow. until it blooms. It's very easy to make. I love uh, this. So again, we're just warming it through. The last thing we're gonna put, one of the last things, we're gonna take some of those apples. Ooh. So these are just, you know, diced apples. Put a little bit of, of acid in them. Yeah. So absolutely. we're gonna take some Marcona almonds. These are so Really fancy good. Spanish almonds. This is the um, orange blossom honey uh, vinaigrette. This looks and smells so good, and it's so healthy and sustainable, and you know where your food is coming from. So people can feel good about eating this, you yeah. know? So we're just gonna take just like that. And this is how you serve it for people. This is how we serve it. And this dish is available in the restaurant as well. For last minute crunch. You have another crunch to there add? There we go. Yes. Can't have too much crunch. Shaved almonds. I love there it. There you go. Cheers. Thank you so much. No Cheers. Problem. You can share. Mm, mm, mm. How is it? It's all freaking good. Thank you so much. I no love problem. what you do. And you're a great um, example to other restaurants in Santa Monica. Thank so. you. Well done. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. I cannot believe I got to hang out with Chef Ray Garcia and learn about FIG's sustainability practices and, and why it should be important to everybody. I mean, they're just doing such great things. And guess what? If you spend $25 at FIG at the market, you get this free tote bag. Reusable tote bag, it's made of recycled cotton, it's fair trade. I mean, they just go above and beyond. All right, Greg, what are you up to?
What's up guys? We are here on Santa Monica Boulevard between 5th and 6th at Sea Salt Fish Grill with my new best friend Jimmy Jang, one of the partners and co-owners of Sea Salt Fish Grill. Jimmy, thanks so much for having us. Thanks Letting for stopping in today. Take over MTV Crip style into your Let's restaurant. Tell us a little bit about this place. I've been here several times, guys, since they opened recently in early May. I love it. Turn others on to it. Well, we just opened a little over a month ago, and um, Sea Salt Fish Grill, the, the idea was that we were going to open up a good, fresh seafood at an affordable price. I think, especially with this type of economy, the way it is, you know, you need to find that. So, tourists, whether you're watching this in the hotel or locals are sitting at home, you got to come out here. It's good <laughs> stuff. What else? I want to say about this that makes it so good is it's not only fresh but it's sustainable and that's that was important for you guys wasn't it that was a big part of it uh, we've actually partnered up with uh, aquarium of the pacific which is based out of long beach we're part of the seafood for the future program and what that is is it's a non-profit program that's designed to work with the fishermen work with the vendors work with the restaurants as partner groups who can help to maintain and like make sure that uh, you're providing sustainable seafood in a reasonable way. And by being a part of the program, it's like, I think we can help raise awareness, you know? And I think that, I mean, even with the distributors that we're working with, we try to ensure that they are sourcing uh, responsibly. And it's a big part of that. One thing that you and I have talked about is, it's not necessarily a bad thing if it's farm raised, right? Yeah, I mean, we have actually a lot of customers who come in, they're asking, like one of the first questions they ask is, is it wild or is it farm? I think some people tend to think that farm is a dirty word, but that's not necessarily the case because under certain controlled environments, the farm fish actually can be tastier and actually healthier. It might provide like less harmful like effects from just being out in the wild. As a restaurateur, you have to be in touch with your distributor and see who they are working with. And then they, there are certain farms that manage their species a little bit better, so it can be a definitely a healthier option. It's not necessarily a bad thing for it to be farmed. All right, here's the hardest hitting question I'm going to ask you all day. What is your favorite thing here? What fish, if someone's coming in here for the first time, what do they have to try? A lot of people, you know, the first thing, they're always going to go for the salmon, but okay. my personal preference is always going to be the barren lily. It's uh, a white fish, it's, a, it's from Australia, and it's farmed, but it's, from, from, it's with a farm that is that has, like, manages as our stock very well and it's just amazing flavor and we have different seasoning choices but if you come in you got to try the barramundi with the soy, soy ginger, ginger. god he's going straight to my heart right now <laughs> he knows that's the one fish that i always get when i come in here uh can we head back in the kitchen maybe check it out sure all right let's do it Look, the fish is not only amazing here, but it's sustainable. You don't even need any more reasons to come down and check it out. Look, Jimmy knew that I've had the bear money, so he hooked up the classic fish tacos. It looks unbelievable. I'm gonna take a big old bite. But wait, not before I tell you, www.seasaltfishgrill.com. They're on Santa Monica Boulevard between 5th and 6th. Come check them out, say what's up to Jimmy. And Natalie, stop wearing the same color as me when we shoot these shows, okay? Mm. The ocean's alternative to fast food. I like it. It's catchy. It makes it sound healthy too, doesn't it? Who doesn't like some healthy fast food? Guys, think just like Sea Salt Fish Grill when you're buying food or you're dining out. Two things, local and sustainable. It helps reduce the carbon footprint big time. And who doesn't like fresh food? It's fresher if it's local and sustainable. All right, all right, I know. I'm sorry. It's your least favorite part of the show. I know it's my least favorite part, but that's it, that's the show. Natalie, super jealous you got to hang out with Ray Garcia and learn from him at the Santa Monica Farmer's Market? That's ridiculous. I'm gonna be jealous for a long time. You owe me on that one. Guys, I tell you every time, it's simple, it's easy. Just be green. I'll see you next time.